In this video, I'm going to demonstrate and share with you how to install an American Standard AmeriCast Princeton tub. Okay, so take a look at this. So this is a drum trap, and I highly recommend that you don't reuse any of this. You cut this off and then put a regular P-trap in. These things are notorious for really slow draining, uh, and if it hasn't been used in a while, it's probably going to be clogged. So this is definitely going to be the better way to go. So for right now, we're just going to cut this off so we can get our plywood in and it will determine where it is. But we're going to be using a fern co to attach to this plumbing. So what I like to use is a torch blade. So this is a heavy metal blade. Um, really, it lasts really long. It says thick metal on it. I think that's a, a nice feature to this uh, blade. and we're going to get take a little bit of this plywood out. So this would be the idea. Probably going to need Okay, so in this tub area, I have three quarter inch plywood down in the main bathroom and they had it recessed down in here. So I'm gonna be putting some new three quarter inch over top of this. Plus this is only like quarter inch thick. So it's not gonna be really stable for a tub. So you're gonna to wanna to put some thicker metal on and that, or a thicker plywood than that. Um, but let's get rid of these blocking from the old tub. Okay, so that, that evens up with this. Now, when I've set my tub, I'm not gonna have any issues um, getting this recessed in. So let's go ahead and dry fit the tub first, and then we'll mark where the plywood is for the, uh, the tub drain. I'm gonna mark where my, my drain is to give me reference to where my drain assembly will be coming over. But um, one of the great things about this tub is that the rough in drain is above floor. So it's designed to have the plumbing connected above floor. We're going to be putting this new plywood down. I just marked where my drain is. Now the particular drop that I, the, um, drain that I got is not going to need uh, basically the area cut out for the um, drain assembly or for the, uh, the connection to the tub. This is above uh, floor rough in is what I got. Uh, so typically if you had a normal tub you want to come out 14 inches and cut a big square so that you had enough room for your drain. But in this instance all I need to do is take out a section over here just to connect my plumbing to the new peat trap. So I'm just going to take out you know, approximately eight inches by 10 inches square to, to uh, make access for that. Now, when you have inch and a half copper, it's nicer to use the inch and a quarter to inch and a half cup link. Okay, so it's just a nicer thing to use the inch and a quarter fitting on here. So we're just going to stick this on there because it's a little more difficult to do it after the tub's installed. But then we'll connect the P-trap after we get the drain assembly in. This part can be connected from our access panel here, but I just wanted to prep this so it's a little bit easier to put together. So one of the things that really annoys me when I see um, knockouts on joists is that most uh, plumbers just kind of randomly just hack out part of the joist to make the plumbing work. 
and most of the time that's really not acceptable. Um, so one of the solutions is, is to get a tub that has a rough in drain assembly that's above the surface of the floor. So you can get a uh, drain assembly that would not require this type of knockout. So for instance, right now, this is eight inches. This joist is sitting directly underneath where the tub drain has to sit to have that extender piece come over to the tub. And this is what normally what you ends up you end up seeing is a knockout in the joist for that tub drain connection. So what I'm installing is a tub drain that is above the subfloor so that you don't have to do anything like this. It's usually a safer bet to get a uh, tub that has a rough in above floor because you don't really know what you're really getting into until you take the old tub out. So I primarily like using the above floor uh, tubs and uh, so that it eliminates this type of issue. So we got our fern coast set and now we're just gonna put our plywood down, nail it in and uh, set the tub. So I always like to set everything before I set the tub. So this tail piece that connects to the tub has a rubber gasket that goes on and then goes to the tub, pretty simple. But what I like to use rather than a traditional plumber's putty is just using a high quality silicone, water clear silicone sealant. Now you have to make sure the manufacturer of the tub that they allow that to be used. Uh, but American Standard does allow 100% silicone to be used. I find it to be, I mean, it really keeps things leak free. So, I mean, plumber's putty, some of it can kind of rub out and smear out of an edge and then you have a leak. So I think you're just, uh, it's a little bit more foolproof with silicone. So the first thing I want to do is get some silicone on the drain hub of the hole. Okay, so just put a real generous amount. We're going to wipe off the excess. So, but I, I advise just putting a generous amount of this all the way around the inside. Same here. Just put a bead all the way around the inside of this. There's a hard chunk here. Okay, so you got plenty of that. Stick this in. And you wanna see this kind of ooze out all the way around. So this rigid tool um, actually snapped off one of the pieces, but it's, been, it's made for a tub drain. So this just allows you to put it in the, in the crosshairs and twist this. And then on the back side of the tub, put some silicone right on top of the bottom of the tub. And then we'll put our rubber gasket. And then this is just for extra insurance. This is, might be redundant for it because it is a rubber gasket but I just like to have this on all corners of this. And then you can use this on the inside. And then you just thread this on. You don't want to over tighten it because it'll end up pushing that rubber gasket out. So it's already kind of doing that here. You wanna pay attention to this rubber gasket and make sure when you put too much pressure on this, it pushes the rubber gasket out of the. Keep this as straight as possible with your alignment here. You're gonna have a little bit of time with this silicone to actually adjust it. So then you can just wipe off that excess silicone here. You just wanna take a rag and just Remove the excess silicone. If you get it right when you install it, it'll it'll calm off. Put our drain assembly together. So you basically want to just for the drain, the overflow. You know, I would, I would just shoot for the middle. You want to have a little bit of adjustment because in case you wanted to take it apart or something. So I would just cut it 
right about mid length here. And then this little tool, rigid tool is nice because it does inch and a quarter and inch and a half. Now this is a pretty thick pipe, so that's why it's a little bit harder. locking nut and then your slip ring. Make sure that the slip ring you have the tapered edge facing towards your fitting. And then same with <coughs> this top piece. So you put your slip nut on there and then just make sure that that, that rubber gasket has the beveled edge towards your fitting because that's what actually gives you the watertight seal. Okay. Okay. Let me take this off here. Okay, so then this gasket is beveled. So you can see how it's real thin at the bottom and real thick at the top. So you want to have this thinner part at the bottom of your Drain. So what I also like to do here is again silicone is my friend. I'm gonna just put a little bit of silicone on this fitting, and then I'll put a nice bead on here. Honestly, the overflow is just as important as the main drain. If you have kids that fill up the drain, if it overflows, you really need to be able to have that to uh, properly drain and not leak off of this. And then once again, maybe just even do a little bit more here. Okay, and then all that silicone kind of holds that in place almost. So then you can tighten your, your other nut here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of silicone for my rubber gasket and a little bit here as well. Notorious for leaking too, so I always put a little bit of silicone on this as well Because uh, you can also use Teflon tape, but silicone is just going to make sure it stays well, so this allows you to Yeah, just hold that really tight and then these things just have to be hand tightened and let's just move, get the rest of the silicone off of the back of this. So that should be well sealed now. And pretty much after I set my tub, I'll be able to pretty much test it. You wanna see how level your floor is. So if it's a quarter inch out, it's basically about what I am in four foot. That's not bad. I wouldn't really be too, really too concerned about that. It's once you get over a half inch or so, that's when you want to be more concerned about it. But the bubble's pretty much in the center. It's good enough. It's not too bad. <clears throat> so let's just keep the tub level. Okay. And then let's just take a look here. So just mark the top of these. So we gotta 
Got a ledger board here. 60 inches. All right, then you want to measure your tub flange. So we got inch and a quarter. We're gonna go inch and five sixteenths, just because there's some crap on here. So you don't want to you don't want to have it too high. So we'll go inch and five sixteenths. Inch and five sixteenths. So you just want to make sure that your ledger board is in a good position and everything's meeting well and your tub is meeting the floor well. Um, so like I said, we're about a qu quarter inch off over four foot off of level. Not a big deal. Uh, it's just going to have to, you're just going to have to remember that when you go to do the tile that you're not 100% level on the back wall. Okay, so I recommend you setting up your trap before you set the tub. It's gonna to be a lot easier to configure this, especially if you don't have any access. So what I did was make a little mark here for where my drain assembly from the tub comes down. And then I just kind of take, took a look of how far away from the, the edge of the, my wall was. So I was probably about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half um, from that wall. So. What, I, what I'm going to do is just glue the 90 degree elbow of the trap in with the extension to this and then I'll glue this in afterwards after I get the tub set so that you don't have to actually set the tub and get it into your trap. You can just take this off and then connect it. So roughly just keep this centered with where your drain assembly is. Now you have some wiggle room. You probably got three quarters of an inch either way that you can actually go. So you do have some additional room to work with. So let's just measure a small piece from my hub to hub here. So about three and a half inches would work. So we'll cut a three and a half inch piece of PVC. Now it would be best to use a chop saw to cut, have nice square cuts. But if you're in a pinch, you can just use a regular saw as well. All right, then we'll just dry fit this real quick, see, see where we're at. And that should, that'll be fine. So we'll go ahead and glue this and connect this before we set the tub. So we'll just sit this aside. So you wanna use a uh, purple primer and then PVC glue for PVC fittings. So real simple, you just need to primer fitting and then the hub of the fitting you know and honestly I'm gonna just go ahead and prime this portion here because it's gonna be easier to do it outside of the plumbing area so at least, at least that's already primed and then we're gonna add some glue to each side and then I always just like do a twisting motion just hold it for a few seconds and then it'll grab hold and we'll just connect this into this. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And actually, we want to make sure that that elbow is straight up and down, actually. Or plumb, I should say. Yeah, so that should work. All right, so yeah, you wanna just make sure you put some silicone on your ledger board. This is gonna secure the tub to it. I just use uh, a clear silicone. It just needs to be an adhesive that will adhere to the tub. And then I have a little bit of movement here. And since I have a door jam on this wall, I'm gonna make sure that my flange goes all the way up against the wall on the door jam wall. Cause you could always fur out this back wall that we have since we have all the drywall open, but you're not gonna be able to do much 
unless you put extension jams and you don't want to put extension jams on the inside of your door frame. What you want to do on this type of tub is use some fender washers. These are some inch and a quarter fender washers. And I just use some galvanized screws for that. And what you do is just stick this right above the tub deck. And that's how you anchor the tub. So you want to do these on every stud. I'm going to put some wood shims in here. And you can just simply cut these off. Got it? Okay. Okay, so what we're going to have is just a standard fitting with a locking nut and then I just got a female adapter that's going to have basically just a short piece of PVC into my trap. So this I'll slide up onto my drain assembly and then glue into my trap. So let's go ahead and prime all of these fittings. glue this tail piece in here just hold that together for a second let that set up okay. we'll glue our trap and we're gonna put this all together at once here Okay, and then we'll just set this in. Okay, I'm good.